In this video, I want to sketch out a proof that a gamma prior is actually conjugate to a Poisson likelihood. So what we're assuming here is that the likelihood is a Poisson distribution. So Xi, which in this case represents the sort of count of violent crimes in a given city, is Poisson distributed with some sort of mean parameter lambda. And what does that mean? Well, it means that we can write down the probability distribution for this likelihood, so we've got the probability of xi given lambda is equal to lambda to the power xi times e to the power minus lambda, all divided through by xi factorial. So that's the likelihood. Let's now write down the prior. So the prior is on the parameter lambda, which we're assuming is gamma distributed with parameters alpha and beta which means that we can write down the probability distribution, which represents our prior. So we've got the probability of lambda here, technically given alpha and beta, is equal to beta to the power alpha, all divided through by gamma of alpha. So this is the gamma function of alpha, which is the continuous equivalent of the factorial function. And it's that times a sort of kernel of lambda to the power alpha minus one, times e to the power minus beta times lambda. So that's our prior distribution in this circumstance. And what we're trying to show here, remember, is that the posterior distribution of lambda actually has a very similar form to that which we've written down here. So that's what we're trying to prove. How are we going to go about proving that? Well, first of all, we use Bayes' rule. So Bayes' rule says that the posterior distribution of lambda, given that we've observed a sort of vector of observations, so x here represents the sort of count of crime in city 1, city 2, sort of all the way through to city n. So to be clear here, x, when I write it down with a sort of bar, underneath it here represents this vector of observations here. And that via Bayes' rule is equal to the likelihood, the probability of this vector of observations given lambda times the prior distribution, p of lambda, all divided through by the probability of our data, technically given model choice and choice of priors here. But what we can actually do is because this denominator here doesn't actually contain lambda at all, we can essentially forget about it because what we're really trying to show here is that in the posterior distribution, we have a sort of kernel which is of similar form to that which we have in our prior distribution. So all we really care about is those terms which depend on lambda. So what we can actually do is we can rewrite this posterior distribution as being proportional to the likelihood, the probability of x given lambda times the prior, the probability of lambda. Okay, so let's write down each of these bits in turn. So first of all, what we'd like to do is we'd like to work out this likelihood here. And this is the likelihood of a number of observations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to write that the probability of our vector of observations x given lambda, we're going to assume that we have a random sample of observations, or technically we're going to assume that we have exchangeable observations. So the order of this sort of data here doesn't actually matter. And if we do that, if we assume that they are exchangeable and they are independent, we can write down the overall likelihood as the product of the individual likelihood. So the product from i equals 1 to n of lambda to the power xi times e to the power minus lambda, all divided through by xi factorial. So if we actually sort of multiply out this product here, this is just equivalent to lambda to the power x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn, because remember here, if you've got lambda to the power a times lambda to the power b, that's equivalent to lambda to the power a plus b. So that's our first part of the term here. Then it's just e to the power, in this case, where we've got sort of e to the minus lambda n times, so that just becomes e to the power minus n lambda. All divided through on the bottom here, it's just going to be divided through by the product from i equals 1 to n of xi factorials. And what we can do here is we can essentially forget about this denominator here because it doesn't contain anything with lambda. So we're going to just sort of forget about that for now. And we're going to sort of reason through that in a minute here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move to a new clean slide here in order to write down the prior distribution and then formulate the posterior distribution.
So just quickly writing out our likelihood function here, we have the probability of our vector observations given lambda is just proportional to, in this case we have lambda to the power x1 plus x2 all the way through to xn times e to the power minus n lambda. So that's all of the terms that involve lambda. And we can simplify the first one a bit when we realize that the sum of xi is just equivalent to n times x bar. So the sum from i equals 1 to n of n xi, rather the sum of i to 1 of xi is just equal to n times x bar. And you can see this because if you just were to take the n over the other side, you'd get 1 over n times the sum of xi is just equal to x bar. So we can just rewrite this as lambda, the sort of first term is lambda to the power n times x bar times e to the power minus m lambda. Okay, so let's now formulate our posterior distribution. So our posterior distribution here, remember the probability of lambda given our vector of observations x is just proportional to the likelihood, the probability of x given lambda times our prior, which is just the probability of lambda. So just writing out each of these terms in sort of on their own, we have here, first of all, starting off with this likelihood, we have lambda to the power n times x bar times e to the power n times lambda. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write out our prior. And importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to forget about all of those terms which actually don't involve lambda. So our prior here, remember, is just proportional to lambda to the power alpha minus 1 times e to the power minus beta times lambda. And what I've actually done is I've forgotten about the beta to the power alpha divided through by gamma of alpha because these two terms are independent of lambda. They don't contain lambda. And then what we can do is we can use our normal rules for multiplying together exponents. And then what we get is lambda to the power n times x bar plus alpha minus 1 times e to the power, what we're going to have is a minus of beta plus n all times lambda. Then what we notice is that this is exactly the same as the kernel of a gamma distribution, which has parameters sort of alpha primed, which is equal to n times x bar plus alpha. And it's got a sort of beta primed, which is equal to beta plus n. And we realize here that because the posterior distribution has to be a proper probability distribution and because it is a function of lambda, the posterior distribution in this case must follow this exact distribution here. So we don't actually need to worry about the other constants here. And so what we've proved here is that if we start off with a prior on lambda, which is lambda is gamma distributed with prior parameters alpha and beta, and we have a sort of Poisson distribution or Poisson likelihood, of each of our individual independent observations, then these two come together to produce a posterior, which is itself gamma distributed. So what we've actually proved is that the gamma prior is conjugate to a Poisson likelihood function.